Welcome back to No Man's Sky, everyone. Jason here, and this is our beginner series for No Man's Sky in 2024. So, in the last episode, we toured the brand new space stations that we got in the orbital update for No Man's Sky back in March. So now that we've gotten that out of the way, we've done a little bit of missions here and there. We need to continue on with our storyline stuff. So, we have Ghost in the Machine. We need to talk to Apollo now that we've upgraded our base. Remember, we were upgrading the base before the uh, whole new uh, bases or uh, space stations came in and all that kind of stuff. Well, we've upgraded it enough. Now Apollo thinks that we're ready. So let's go talk to... Uh, oh, we're switching? Really? Ghost in the Machine. I hate that it does that. So remember, if you're ever confused or if there's no objective markers... Make sure that the log is actually highlighted to where you want to go. Like, if we want to do this mission, sometimes it'll switch between them because the game thinks it's smarter than you, I guess? I don't know. You have to fight it a little bit, but just make sure your mission, whatever one you want to do, is highlighted. There we go. Let's talk to Apollo. You are not alone. I know you, Traveler. I know where you've been, and I know where you're going. There is no need to hurry. Who are you? You will find us when the time is right. Okay. I don't know what that was. What the? What the? What? Okay. Might have had a weird, uh, had a weird bug there. That's nice. Okay, now we have Apollo. I don't understand. This game is freaking out all of a sudden. Uh, are you ready? Make sure you are. This job isn't going to be a small one. You might not be heading back to that base of yours for a while. All right. Yeah, I'm ready, Apollo. Let's go. Good. Let the hunt begin. I've detected a Corvax installation on that world of yours. The interference in your transmissions give is a giveaway. It might be disguised as the style of another species, but don't be fooled. The synthetics delight in espionage. Uh, yeah, you are a robot. You know that, right, Apollo? I am not robotic. I was born just like you were, but this is no world for the flesh. My brain and what organs I have left, everything was transferred to this shell. This is who I am. Oh yeah, what happened to you, buddy? I took my revenge when the time came. That is all you need to know. So start from the hypothesis that the Sentinels use their portals to get around. How do they activate them? We need to observe, we need to summon them. And what better way than to attack a secret Corvax facility? They are both robotic life forms. Too much in common. Too much coincidence. This guy is very uh, anti-robotics. Even though he is a robot. Anyway. Enter the factory and hack the terminal within. If we gain data about the Sentinels, good. If not, we'll have summoned them to trace any energy spikes back on that world of yours. The portals will be ours in no time. So, either way, we win. We either get the, we get the uh, Sentinels to come in anyway, or... We might get some information from the terminal. So good. All right, let's go. Apollo nods to me. For the first time, I sense respect in their gesture. The approximate coordinates for the hidden facility are logged into my ship's navigational computer. Well, let's go. We have a storm happening in the middle of uh, space here. All right, so let's head over here. The suspected Corvax facility. So... We're helping Apollo because he's going to help us track down what the heck happened to Artemis. Because, uh, you guys remember, Artemis, uh, let's just say something happened to Artemis. I don't want to ruin it. I've played this multiple times. I don't think the storyline has changed anyway, but I don't want to ruin it. If you are a brand new player, I don't want to spoil it at all. But something happened to Artemis, and we're going to find out. We're on the lookout for that, and Apollo is helping us do that. But for now, we're going through the portals because the last thing we saw was Artemis went through a big portal and something happened on the other side. So we're trying to figure out how the heck the portals work. That way we can go find Artemis. Oh, we have a sentinel right here. So we need to break into this. So there's the sentinel facility, but the uh, manufacturing facilities are always locked down with a door. And so you can either shoot it with, the, uh, with your ship if you want to. You fly low and slow and you just shoot the door or if you have a weapon on your uh, multi-tool, you can just shoot the door that way. Again, if you have a better up, you know, weapon, it'll go faster. You know, if you have a lot of cool upgrades, you're doing more damage. 
not too worried about oh my god okay never mind these guys are gonna kick my butt i was gonna say i'm not too worried about it but holy crap i almost lost my entire shield with that oh it's a quad that's why the little dog looking ones they will mess you up so don't mess around with them until you get some good upgrades going that's probably why uh, apollo wanted us to get some upgrades and i just didn't listen all right well let's interact with this let's hack this computer we need chromatic metal, pure ferrite, which we already have 50 of it. And we need, oh, sodium, we, need, we have 20, so let's do that. We need eight chromatic metal. I'm pretty sure I have some on my spaceship, right? Um, I do, but my, sh my ship is too far away. I have to go get eight chromatic metal. You know, since my ship is like 200 feet away, let's grab eight chromatic metal. So, um, oh, six. So you'll notice what I just did there. If you pick up an item, like a stack of materials like this, if you pick it up, then you can press X if you're on Xbox or Square on PlayStation to quick split it. It basically cuts it in half. So I have 389. If I hit X once, it drops it in half. So I have 194, 194 on the, in my ship. I just dropped half of it. You hit it again, it cuts it in half again. So it keeps cutting it in half. So you'll see, I quickly tap until I get the, close to the number I want. That way you don't have to worry about, oh, I have to just slowly, like, you can also hit left and right on the D-pad, and it'll slowly lower it down to, you know, 10. It goes, it drops it by 10. You see that? Boom. You can just do it by 10 if you need to, like, if you need 190 or whatever. You can lower it by 10 by hitting left and right. But if you want to just cut it in half, you can just do that too. So we could just do boom, boom, boom. There we go. So you'll see me, a lot of times I will just cut it in half. It, it, it takes less time to cut it in half versus, oh, I want to slide with the uh, left and right on the D-pad and get that perfect number. You're probably never going to get there. I just get close enough. Anyway, let's, let's uh, put in the, uh, the chromatic metal. Buzz. Buzz. The terminal houses an upgrade module for my exosuit. However, I find few clues for Apollo. It seems the Corvax Within left this world many days ago, apparently recalled on a priority transmission to their species flo flotilla. Something has them worried. Something's going on. Let's probe the factory logs. This place seems to have been more than just a factory. It was home to a Corvax who lived within its walls. It appears that they were experimenting with autonomy from their collective. Well, let's check the video feed. What the heck? They're going to be on their own? The Corvax are like a, uh, a robotic uh, species that they all are linked. We saw that with our scientists. When they get become unlinked, when they get separated, they, they freak out. So this one was f purposely trying to be separated. One of the internal sensors has recorded movement within the facility. It shows me footage of the vents at my feet. There is something here with me. Oh, let's shine a light on that. I shine a light upon it. It is a small, hairy creature, shaking and afraid. It cries out. The animal appears to have lived here for quite some time. There is a nest in the corner, vestiges of food upon a small dish, even a few clumsy toys and trinkets. The animal seems to have been a companion to the Corvax. My scanner tells me that the creature is gravely ill. It will die no matter what intervention occurs. Well, I'm not going to euthanize the animal. I'm not going to do nothing. I have to feed the animal because I'm a sucker and I would... If I find a, a hurt dog, even if I know it's like going to die, I'm going to give it food. That way, at least the last moments feel good. So here, we're going to feed it. I feed the creature. Nervously, it takes the carbon and begins to eat. A few moments later, it violently coughs up much of the little meal, only to try to continue the process, shivering with every mouthful. I move on from the factory complex, leaving the animal to its fate. Yeah, so even if the animal is going to die, I mean, why would you, you know, why would you harm it, you know, at the end? Oh God, what the? Okay, yeah, I guess I, uh, I, I made the uh, Sentinels angry. <laughs> well, let's get a weapon out here. Let's see if I can take out the quad. The little uh, dog looking uh, Sentinel is really, really intense. It has a laser that will drain your shields quickly. And the healers will heal it, so you don't want that. The healers, get out of here, healer.
That little, uh, that little healer, uh, drone is, like, dodging. Holy cow. There we go. Okay. Healers coming out of nowhere. Just healers all over the place. What the heck is going on here? So I try to take the healers out first because if you just damage some of uh, the uh, sentinels, the healers will just keep fixing them. So you got to take out the healers first. And look at They're smart enough to know to get behind shields. So if you need to grab one of these green barrels, it'll recharge your shields as long as you don't take any damage. The second you take more hits, it'll stop uh, recharging. And then that's a summoner. The triangle-looking uh, sentinels are summoners. They will keep bringing in more sentinels. So get rid of them. That way you can stop getting more sentinels in here. Here we go. That one's good. I'm going to keep moving. If you stand still, you're easier to shoot. That uh, the quad is just freaking out over there. You see him? He's just running in circles. Okay. I mean, I like it. He's not hitting me, so that's always good. Well, let's take out the uh, quad. Let's see if we can do that. Now, I'm doing this because the Sentinels will drop something called Salvage Glass. Basically, it is a random piece of the Sentinels that can give you an item. It can give you upgrades as well. So... You really want to farm a lot of those if you want upgrades. Oh, God. He went invisible. I don't know where he is. There he is. The quads will go invisible. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Look at it. It's just draining my shield like crazy. Wow. Yeah, the lasers on the quads will mess you up. That's why you, if you have a, a upgrades for your shield, you, you should be okay. But if not... Oh, my God. There's another quad. Are you serious? All right, we're done. We're done. we're done with this. I'm not even fighting another one. I'm gonna, I'm gonna die. So I'm gonna pick up the green barrels because they can give me the glass. And we're out of here. I'm not dying. I'm not dying. We're gonna need to go. Let's go. Of course. We're gonna try to get out, the heck out of here. They're gonna be right behind me. Uh, Apollo, this is not a time to do this, man. I'm, I'm busy getting murdered by the Sentinels, man. So if you just boost a little bit, they should leave you alone. Okay, they're gone. Okay, they're gone. All right, let's talk to Apollo now. Jeez, Louise. Good work. Your attack on that factory paid off. Did you get any useful data? Eh? Yeah, not really. No matter. We have what we need. I recorded countless signal flares when the sentinel started to appear. Energy streams sparked beneath the planet's surface, moving from monolith to monolith. We must be on the right track. Examine these structures. They are all linked. I know it. I'll attune your scanner to the sentinel energy signals. We shall soon have our prey. Good luck. I'll speak to you on the other side. So now we know that the, uh, the teleporters, the big portals, they are linked to the monoliths because when uh, the sentinels used it to get in here, they charged up the monoliths. We killed a whole bunch of sentinels. All right, so now we also need to talk to Apollo, not Apollo, Polo and Na excuse me, and Nada, to let them know what the heck is going on here. So let's go talk to Nada and Polo and let them know what the heck is going on. So all of that work, and we got one salvage glass. That kind of sucks. Usually you get better odds than that, but man, I was unlucky. So it's a random drop. Sometimes you'll get every single sentinel will give you one. Sometimes you don't get any, like what I just did. I killed a few and I only got one. But when you open it, if you press X if you're on Xbox or square if you're on PlayStation, you open it up, it'll give you an item. In that case, I got nanites. I got nanites out of it. So you can get nanites, you can get upgrade materials, you can get like... You know, antimatter. You can get a whole bunch of different stuff, but one of the items you can get is a sentinel upgrade. And that's what we're looking for. We're looking for sentinel upgrades because they can really help out in your shield department. Like if you want upgraded shields, you can get that. They will also, the weapon upgrade, the sentinel weapons only affect your bolt caster. Oh God, that was freaking out. They only affect your bolt caster. So keep that in mind. If you want to use sentinel weapon upgrades, you need to have a bolt caster. Anyway, let's talk to uh, Nada and see what the heck is going on. 
What new knowledge, Traveler? Is Apollo Entity known to you? Yeah, uh, we were planning on attacking the Sentinels. We're going to go to a monolith next, man. A Traveler Entity that is not known to Nada, yet they know Artemis Entity, who themselves no longer recalls Nada. You bring news that alarms Nada. What else does our home fail to see? Nada looks troubled. They retreat into themselves. Well, what am I supposed to do, Nada? Polo friend has kept us safe. Nada's carapace has been Nada's, and Nada's only, for many years, outside of the cycle of data. We help others escape, those who might process our reality. Nada has a peace here. Nada has peace here. Those who hunt us cannot see us. Nada does not want it to end. Oh, he's afraid that they're going to get caught. Now that the Sentinels are on to us and we're messing with the Sentinels, they might come back to the space anomaly. But better to understand, to know what comes for us. Do not stop on our account. Oh, so he's nervous about that, but he's like, hey, look, man, you need to know what's going on with those Sentinels, so go after them. All right. Well, let's continue on. And remember, guys, if you want to come back to the, uh, the anomaly, the space anomaly, there's always missions here at the Nexus. This big green cube. This is the Nexus cube. You can get missions here. If you go in here, tons of stuff. You can get, uh, like, the, there'll always be a daily mission. This, that's going to be the yellow one. It'll give you Quicksilver. This is a rare currency that you can use to get special in-game items. You cannot buy it. There's no microtransactions. But you can earn it by doing missions. You get one per day, and then every weekend we have a special weekend event that you guys can do to get a whole bunch of Quicksilver. So, and then they have, you know, normal missions around here. So you can do these and just get like nanites and special items like hyper cores or liquid explosive, things like that. So there's always missions in here and they change every 10 minutes, every 10 minutes. If you don't like these ones, come back in 10 minutes and they will change to something else. That way, you know, okay, I'll come back in, you know, in a 10 minute period and boom, there you go. Anyway, let's continue on with Apollo's mission. Now we have to go find a monolith. So let's go find it. We have to search for it. So he tuned our scanner to it. A monolith. So we should be able to scan and find one, hopefully. Let's see. Oh, we found one. I think. No. Oh, there's one over there. Let's head on over here. This is the Lyline Source. Or Leyline Source? I guess Leyline is a better way to say it. Leyline? <laughs> so, yeah. There it is. And that looks like a... Uh, oh, it's a cable plant. So this is a uh, anomaly planet. I think we've already been here, so we should be okay. We don't need to scan any animals or anything like that. Remember, if you want to find a whole... Or want to earn a whole bunch of nanites... Scan the animals on a planet. When you scan all of them, they give you a bonus for finding all the animals on a planet. And that is depending on the amount of animals. The more animals you find, the... Uh, no, new record. Strongest psychotic field. Okay. But yeah, the more animals a, uh, a planet has, the higher the reward. So like if a planet only has one animal, it's going to be very low. But if it has 12 or 15, it's going to be really high. So where is this building at? I'm looking around. It's around here somewhere. I'm not seeing any buildings though. Oh god. You're all you're gonna make me land, aren't you? You're gonna make me land. Alright, well let's land here. I see uh red, that means oxygen. I'll take oxygen. I'll always take oxygen. So now when we land, we can pull up our visor and it's three hundred uh meters that way. And while we're heading that direction, let's pick up some more uh, plants. Oh, yeah. Look at all this oxygen. Yeah. Oxygen is a rare resource in No Man's Sky. It is very, very useful for building stuff. So I always recommend collecting anything you can and make sure you have a little bit of it, like everything, because you never know what you're going to need to build, like an upgrade or whatever. So you might as well have as much as you can hold on hand, basically on a, a resource you can always use. However... Oxygen is one of the more important ones. Yeah, we did scan it. All right, so you notice if I'm scanning, looking for my, my objective, it automatically turns into my target sweeper. At the bottom of the screen, you'll see it says target sweeper, but if I hit left and right bump or left and right on my D-pad, I can switch between different modes. 
That's what I'm doing. So I know that right there, that uh, plaque is going to be my location. But I want to scan animals. I want to scan, uh, you know, these uh, plants or whatever. While I'm going there, I can switch between the different modes. And so the target sweeper will only be activated if your uh, mission objective it has a uh, location. Once we get here... Like, we don't need to... Yeah, it's marked. So yeah, now now if I go to uh, target sweeper mode, it just says, Sorry, you're here. There's no mission yet. This is my mission. That's it. So let's activate this thing and see what it is. Oh, it's speaking in a language I do not know. I don't know what to expect as I approach the structure. An army of sentinels, perhaps? Some gateway through which I'll find Artemis? But in the shifting structure of this monolith, I can feel something else. A story. A vision. It is already burning itself into my eyes. Well, let's activate this thing. The Traveler. Arrival. The Traveler awoke beneath the shadow of a red star. Uh, through the lonely cosmos they fled, yearning for purpose and meaning. They found an anomaly, an aberration, a door to the heavens. No Gek, no Viking, no Corvax could see it. Only the Traveler could perceive the portal, though they did not know how to step through. They did not know the secret language, the glyphs. They did not yet grasp the price of the final truth. Well, I'm going to witness the glyphs. I am filled with the knowledge of an ancient traveler. I see glyphs in my mind. Part of the code I need to activate a portal. As I depart, I spot a sentinel drone in the distance. It moves away quickly. So the drones know what's happening. They know what's happening. So I need to get more glyph sets. So I'm getting uh, glyph coordinates for a special location. Oh, and the sentinels are pissed. Let me get these guys out here. So I'm I'm finding the loca a specific location that is tied to all these uh these uh plaques, these ancient ruins. I don't know what the heck they're gonna lead me. Where are they gonna lead me to? Let me grab these. Up, oh, reinforcements are coming. Let me run back to my ship. Leave the area or hide to escape it. Yeah, we need to get out of here. So now the Sentinels, they don't know where I am. They just appeared over there. They're going to be looking at the plaque. Look at that. They're all heading over there. I'm already gone, idiots. All right. Let's head over here to my ship. Now, you don't want to get inside while these Sentinels are searching, because if you get inside a ship, it'll call in these Sentinel ships. So you wait till your timer is gone, and then boom. Now I can get in. Get in. No problem. No issues. So we need two more sets. We need to visit two more of those special locations. Where are they at? Follow the ley lines. I need to go out into space? Probably. I need to scan from space. Tracing route to source. Okay, so the next one is going to be here. Every time. It seems every time you have to uh, basically go out into space that way you can scan because it might be on a different planet like this one is on a different planet I'm getting on in here a blighted planet this is where i put my uh my first base why i mean i'm sure i did it because i just wanted to get it done make sure to go through oh we got two pieces of uh salvage glass let's open those up i got a weapon upgrade so this is for my multi-tool this is gonna be for my my awesome bolt caster. So, oh, I already have two. Look at that. I already have two upgrades in here. I have space for one more. So let's install that. So you can have up to three sentinel uh, upgrades. You know, three of the same kind. So for my multi-tool, my weapon upgrade, I have three of them. For your suit, you can have three sentinel-like suit upgrades. So yeah, just keep in mind. And so if we run into another one, I can use it and see if it's better because these Sentinel upgrades are randomized just like any other upgrade. And so sometimes you'll get better stats. Like this one is decent, 1% damage, fire rate 8% and reload time 8% faster. But this next one right next to it 
1% damage, fire rate's only 4%, but the reload time is almost doubled at 15% faster. So it just depends on what you want. You want to reload faster? You want to uh, have more damage? Whatever. You can kind of get rid of the old ones that you don't like and use the new ones. So we're at another ancient structure here. Let's uh, learn some language here. Oh, you're not going to let me? Oh, it won't let me. Okay, fine. Whatever. I didn't want to learn your language anyway. I'm going to activate the stone. Another one with a language I cannot uh, read. Oh, I got one word. Imminent. As I approach the structure, I feel that same burning sensation in my eyes. There is nothing to read, and yet I am more aware of these words than anything I have ever known. Let's activate it. The Traveler. Sin. So these are chapters. The Traveler found a way. They always did. The first drone screamed when it was cut open. So now the story of the Traveler. The Traveler is cutting open Sentinels. Within the shattered memories of Sentinels, the Traveler found the glyphs they needed. They passed through the gateway, emerging before the face of Omnipotence. So the Traveler was killing Sentinels to learn the glyphs. Oof. The Traveler asked the Atlas how many worlds were left to visit. They had seen so many in their life, they did not wish to die before they saw them all. And the Atlas answered. So the uh, Traveler tr uh, finally got to the Atlas and started asking it questions. How many planets are there to visit? 18, oh my god, there's not, that's, I don't even know that one. 18 quintillion billion planets? More than could be seen in any lifetime. It was impossible to explore the universe before the Traveler died. Yeah, I think when they came out, uh, when uh, No Man's Sky originally released, they said that if every, if one person spent one second on every planet, it would take them hundreds of years to visit all the planets. If you just spent one second, like you just touched the planet and moved on, it would take you hundreds of years to visit all the planets in No Man's Sky. That is insane. That is a, a ridiculous amount of planets. Well, let's witness that glyph. I am filled with the knowledge of an ancient traveler. I see the glyphs in my mind and another piece of the code. I think of the Atlas. I have encountered this name many times in my trial travels, yet its true nature still eludes me. The vision fills me with fear. So yeah, the Atlas so it's, it was telling the travelers, created the travelers. And so the Atlas is like, uh, I think in this, in the, uh, in No Man's Sky lore, I think as far as we know, the, uh, the Corvax, they worship the Atlas like it's a god. Because the Atlas has is, is, uh, created the travelers and all the beings in the universe. So that's why the, uh, the Corvax worship it. The, uh, all the other races don't like it, but the Corvax love the Atlas. Oh, we're heading back over here. And I like how we're getting kind of some of the, uh, background lore for, uh, No Man's Sky. The first traveler awoke. And he is the one who uh, killed the first sentinel, learning about the portals, using the portals to go everywhere. So, yeah. And now we're about to get to the uh, third chapter. What happened? What was this, uh, this traveler? What the heck happened with this traveler? So let's get down in here. Now, whenever, you know, this is the target sweeper. They'll mark a general area. So, let's do a scan real fast as we're coming in and look for buildings as well because we know the building is going to be like an ancient structure. Oh, there we go. This is a monolith. So, we did a uh, ancient, two ancient ruins. And now we have, well, we did a plaque, an ancient ruin, and now this is technically a, uh, a monolith. So, you can tell the monoliths are, they generally have a platform that they sit on and they're larger. And they'll have three knowledge stones near them. But these are the really, like, hardcore structures in No Man's Sky. These are the most important ones for ancient technology. Another set of, uh, words I cannot read. Everything here is tinted with that same red. The same unobservable crimson that fills my vision when I blink. I can only hope the structure holds the final glyphs. That my trial at these ruins is nearly over. Let's activate it. The Traveler, a purpose. 
The Atlas told the Traveler that they were the first of their kind, that a multitude would follow. Each would be endowed with the same noble soul, each able to travel from planet to planet in eternal solitude. The first Traveler rejected the gift of the Atlas. This was not what they hoped for. What was the purpose of infinity if you could not see it all? If you were alone, if you would one day die? The first traveler cursed the Atlas and claimed that they would find a way to survive no matter the cost. All of these worlds, all of time itself would be for the travelers to witness. So the traveler did not like that idea. I am filled with the knowledge of an ancient traveler. I see the final glyphs in my mind, the final portion of the code. So yeah, the first traveler did not like it. And so we're all uh, basically shared souls of that first traveler. We all come to being after that first traveler, uh, your, your character as well, as far as I, as far as I understand. So we have all the lie lines. So now we have one more place to go to. We need to find the portal itself. Let's see. We've linked it. Let's trace it to the source and it is over on the red planet. Okay. We keep going back and forth between two different planets. You think they would have chosen more. There's different planets on the system, but ah, it's randomized or not randomized. It's procedural. So there's a difference between randomized, procedural, and like generated and stuff like that. So procedural in the uh, No Man's Sky sense is that it's made as it comes in. So it will make the mission marker right when you select that mission, when I scanned. It's not that, oh, it's predetermined or anything like that. So if I would quit and come back, it might have made a different uh, location. It is generated procedurally like that. The uh, same thing goes for, like, if you talk about ships in No Man's Sky. There's a portion of them that are randomly number generated. The stats on the ships are all randomly generated. The, uh, the, you know, like, if it's an A class, an S class, whatever. But each, um, each system has specific ships that show up. So if you go to a system you and you see a ship, that visual, the, uh, the cosmetic, the way the ship looks will always be the same. However, you can reload the game again, and when you come back, you'll see that same ship, but it might be an A-class. And if you reload again, it'll be a C. You reload again, it'll be a B. It'll change randomly. The stats of it, but the visual look of it, the actual ship itself, is not random. It's procedurally generated, but it's locked in. It's just, that's what it is. It's generated, not randomized. Hopefully I'm explaining that as far as I know, I mean, I could be wrong on that as well because I'm not, I don't work on the game. But from years of playing it, that's generally how it works. So if you go to a system, you like a ship there, it'll always be there. It's not like you, every time you, you save and reload, it'll generate brand new ships. It will not do that. They always get the same type of ships in that area. It's just the stats, the, um, the numbers on that ship, the way it, you know, the, the bonuses and everything on it will be different. All right, let's uh, activate this portal. Traveler Anomaly confirmed. Breach. 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 I approach the portal. I think of every passing thought and idle wish that led me to this moment. Within this gateway, I might find Artemis. I might find the source of the Sentinels. I might fi find a whole new universe. But it is more than this. This is not fate. I am making a choice. A leap of faith that somewhere out there in the dark... I will find who I am meant to be. Let's input those glyphs that we found. That was a kind of profound moment there. All right. I step forward, not knowing what I will find on the other side, but I feel it deep in my heart, the call towards a deeper truth. There will be a, this will be the start of everything. So yeah, this is part of being a traveler. You get that drawn, that feeling of, I need to go and do something. I need to go do this thing. You need to reach out into the, uh, into the universe. That's missing a texture right there. So yeah, we're, I don't know where we're going. 
I don't know where the coordinates are. We followed it just like Artemis did. Artemis got those coordinates too, and when he went through, he uh, got stuck. And so now we're chasing Artemis. We're trying to figure out where the heck Artemis went. All right, this is a cool looking planet. Anomaly planet. Hostile system. Breach. Oh, we have a warning here. Atlas protocol initiated. Something's going on in the Atlas. Loaded us in. I freaked out a little bit. Loaded us in front of the Atlas. Okay, that was a fast load, but it kind of hitched a little bit. But that used to be a, have a little bit of a loading screen. Okay, so they made that a little bit faster. Let's talk to the Atlas. Let's see what the heck is going on here. The text blinks before me. It awaits input. I'm going to say hello. <laughs> hello, world. I love that. An audio recording plays, echoing out across the vast interface. We were once travelers. We once aspired to more than dirt and dust. This is, I guess, the Atlas playing an audio recording. The audio clicks and time passes. Show me a world, Atlas. Show me something no one has ever seen before. The voice ends. The interface grows still and silent. It awaits a command. Um, let's perform some diagnostics here. It has been 1 trillion, 946 billion, 218 million, 921,221 years since last diagnostic 64 percent of worlds operating within expected parameters a trillion years a trillion years holy crap two million six hundred eleven thousand actionable ob observation await in awaiting analysis subroutine sentinel status error null value subroutine glass uh, status operational 4,182 breach attempts subroutine traveler status operational 458 critical error warnings exo mine structural integrity compromised immediate repairs required initiate personality interface yes or no uh yes traveler Reality fades. Everything does. My body, my voice, my soul. All of it speaks to me. The Atlas stands before me in all of its might. I want to ask about Artemis. I want to find them. But something is happening to me. I need to get out of here. I need to... I'm gonna scream. I try to scream, but I have no mouth. No form. <laughs> I must scream, but I have no mouth. So something's going on with the Atlas. It has been going for over a trillion years. That is crazy. It's just been operating on its own for a trillion years. How many travelers have we seen in a trillion years? Oh, look at this nice planet. Whoa, whoa. Okay, so what the heck was that about? We know my ship is over here, 400 feet away. It's a nice planet, I like it. That nice water, nice grass. Oh, we just, uh, our suit just initialized, oh God. Locate and board your ship. 
It's almost like the begin beginning of the game, you guys. Remember? We had to... We woke up and we had to go find our ship and it was damaged. Now, I will tell you, back in the day... Whoa, it just turned from yellow to green grass. Whoa, I like that. That's not a normal planet. Usually, you don't get separate colors like that. Back in the day, you did. Not like that. Not recently. That's nice. Uh, but yeah, uh, years ago in No Man's Sky, you would actually have to repair your ship again. Like, it was literally, like, starting over. Not, like, starting completely over. Like, you still had all your upgrades and your materials, but your ship was broken just like the start. In the beginning, when we had to, you know, repair our engines and stuff, it was just like that. And I'm going to spoil it a little bit because it's going to happen in a few minutes, or a few seconds anyway. Now our ship is still uh, fixed. It's all good to go. So if you go in here and look... Oh no, it is broken! <gasps> they do break your ship again. Wow, okay. I take it back. I take it back. Maybe they maybe that was a bug earlier. But let's uh talk to the distress signal. Scenario, iteration, something deleted. Boundary, separation, failure, likely. Vessel 16 emptied. Cause, sentinel intervention. Deliberate transfer, just like the start of the game. Analysis. Fresh iteration generated. Anomaly containment prepared. Let's broadcast. Broadcast received. Traveler anomaly detected. Anomaly is compliant. Position logged. System integrity scan initialized. Just like the start. This is literally... Did this happen in the, in the beginning of the game? Like, did we get erased and, and reloaded back in? Because, yeah, it just says that we were deleted. And now we're back again. But we have all our memories. We have all of our materials. So nothing really changed. But it kind of did. It reset us. Back here. So I'm going to take out some of these. Maybe we'll get some upgrades out of this. Come on. And... Oh, we got launch field. So that's good. Also get our uh, buried tech. Thank you. Get in our ship. Thruster's broken. I escaped to my ship, glad of something familiar in this strange world. Where has the portal been taking me? I was caught in the gravity of that infernal machine, not strong enough to resist. It identified itself as Atlas, the entity so many worship and fear. I saw no sign of Artemis, no trace of the Sentinels. Why did I even step through that gateway? Why did I follow this path? Well, yeah, we were here to, to rescue Artemis. That was the whole thing. Is that true? Or is that just a lie I tell myself? The kind of thought a noble person might have. Artemis was in need of assistance, but did I really risk my life just for them? There is something more, some other yearning. As I stare at the console, an opportunity presents itself once more. There is an inbound transmission emerging from a location on this very planet. So we have a location here. Let's uh, communicate. What's going on here? You are not alone. The signal appears to be coming from this very system using the same words that led me to Artemis so long ago. Could it be them? Did Artemis meet the Atlas as I have? Yeah, what's going on? Why do I keep getting the same message over and over again? That's going to be crazy. All right, guys. Well, hopefully you guys liked the episode. If you did, hit that like button and... I will see you guys in the next one when we go investigate that signal that is over there. Yeah, 11 minutes away, we'll go investigate. So I will see you guys then.